Now joining us, speaking of Pacific, the play-by-play voice of the Pacific Tiger, Zach Beirudi on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Zach, it's a ball night in Stockton, baby. You ready? Garam, Jason, I am good to go, man. How you guys doing? We are, we are great. We are feeling good. And this is a game that we have looked forward to for a few weeks, knowing Pacific has improved um, under Damon Stoudemire. This is a place where BYU's lost before. Uh, and, and here BYU comes in, likely without Yoli Childs, for an interesting matchup against the top defensive team in the league. How do you see this game playing out tonight? You know, I, it's it's really tough to tell, and I've, I've been trying to go back and forth in, in my own head, and even Rubel and I went back and forth a little bit this week just in, in some messages about, you know, how Yoli is such a game changer. So depending on if he's going to be if he's going to be active, if he's going to be somewhat at full strength or if not, it's, it's a complete game changer if Yoli is available for BYU, obviously. So based on that, I really don't, I don't have any big prognostication other than I think it's going to be a really good game. We talked to you at the beginning of conference play. Now the Tigers 15-6, and 3-2 and two in league play. What has your attention most about this specific team? What stands out to you the most now a couple weeks into conference play? I think what stands out the most is that they're in every game and, and even some games where they fall behind, they're in every game at the end. And you go back to that St. Mary's game, which obviously was a thrilling four overtime win for this team. They were down by like eight with three minutes to go. And they came back against one of the Titans in the conference and, and were able to send it to, you know, four overtimes, including a, a wild shot to set it to triple overtime, uh, the banked in three by Gary Chavichian. But nevertheless, they're in every game, and I think they feel that they can can win every game and claw their way back. They were down 14 at the half at Santa Clara on Saturday, and they came back, and, and they lost by four. Probably should have had a chance to tie that game if not for a blown call at the end. So, you know, they're, they're never out of it, and, and they're going to stay in there for 40 minutes. How much confidence did uh, this team take from beating St. Mary's, from getting that quadruple overtime win? I think a lot, a lot, lot. You know, the, the win before that was at Pepperdine, which it was another game the Tigers trailed by 13 and came back and won on the road. But, it, you know, that being said, it's Pepperdine. So you, you go into St. Mary's and you're like, okay, like how, how substantive was that, that win, you know, against Pepperdine? They've been there before. Well, to beat St. Mary's, a team they hadn't beaten since coming back to the WCC, and to hang in there for as long as they had to hang in there to do it, I think was was proof that, that – this team is substantively improved. So I, I think it it boosted their confidence exponentially. Mark Pope said this week that the uh, the Tigers have taken on the identity, the personality of their head coach, Damon Stoudemire. What's been his recipe for turning this program around? How has he done this? Well, you know, if you watch a Stoudemire practice, he always preaches to the guys, hey, I want you to do this the right way and even if you know they run a play and it, and it works and it's executed if it's not run the way that he wanted it run he's gonna he's gonna get in them and he's gonna say hey go back and do it again because it matters that you do this the right way and develop these winning habits uh you know you can't damon always says you can't cheat it you can't cheat the system uh you can't cheat your way to to winning and it was no, it was not evident any more than it was at Saint against the Saint Mary's uh, Gales when they were able to to hang in there for four overtimes. And I think you know if Damon doesn't keep hammering them about doing things the right way, about being tough uh, mentally and and physically, you're not going to see them win that game. So I think the coaching points that Stoudemire has been emphasizing are finally starting to take root. Not only that, you get all your scholarships back this year, which of course helps you a ton. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen kind of Pacific emerge from that era and now are 15 and 6 at this point, have a win over St. Mary's. Uh, big matchup with uh, BYU tonight. We're talking with Zach Bayrudi, play by play voice of the Pacific Tigers and friend of the program. Vegas says this is a six point game. How do you feel about that line? Uh, you know, these lines are always so hard to predict when Pacific and BYU get together. For some reason, I, I don't know why uh, you guys know as well as anybody Pacific always plays BYU tough. I mean, the, the thing that the one that stands out in my mind is the year that Pacific was postseason banned in 15, 16, and they went into the Marriott center of all places after BYU had beaten St. Mary's and, and Pacific goes in there having played a Thursday night game in San Diego. And it's a 1 PM matinee in Provo and they beat, 
an outstanding BYU team. Uh, BYU's lost in Stockton a couple of times, so they could just never seem to get this game right. Uh, that being said, I feel like the, that line's a little bit too high. I think it's going to be closer than a six-point spread, but I'll say this. Uh, BYU, as you know, certainly capable of running it up, and if they're making shots, it, it could be a tough night for Pacific. Going into this conference season, everyone was saying uh, this this conference it's improved every and, year. And, and every we, year and, we and, say and we that. hear that every year. So sometimes you just kind of blow it off, but it mm-hmm. actually looks like this conference may be improved. Are you surprised at some of the wins and losses this year from some of these teams? You know, I'm not. Like you look at the coaches in this in this league, and you know, obviously Mark Pope in his first year. But look at the guys that have been brought in. I mean, you know, Stoudemire obviously this is a proving ground for him. It's his first head coaching job, but you know, Herb Sendak, Lorenzo Romar. I mean, these are guys that, that can really coach and really recruit. So it does not surprise me one bit that this league has all of a sudden found itself with five teams and a tie for second place. You have the quality coaching, uh, you know, quality recruiting going on. And, you know, at, at this point, everybody kind of knows everybody. So it, it's not a surprise to me. I think it's a lot of fun. I think this this year in Vegas is going to be more fun for, for folks in the league than we've ever had. Just absolutely. figuring out who's going to go where. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and it should shake out to be fun. You mentioned the uh, veteran coaches there. And then there's the two guys that look like they're super young, right? Todd Golden and Sam Scholl. Those guys uh, have the baby face going. They, they do have the baby face. I didn't mean to exclude those guys, but look, Pacific <laughs> played uh, USF after, after beating St. Mary's and, and Golden and his team came to the Spano center and, and they waxed, the Tigers early in that game, and it wasn't close. So you you obviously have uh, have San Francisco, who's always a tough out. And we haven't seen San Diego yet. I know they seem a little bit down this year, but I really am a big fan of Sam Scholl. I've seen him coach his guys up close. I've actually been sitting in the Spano Center doing some notes, and he's been working with uh, with guys. He brought guys in from the hotel to do extra work, and just the way he interacted with his players, I'm a big fan. It's going to be a fun, fun game tonight. Uh, Zach, we appreciate the time. Uh... People can listen to you uh, on the radio tonight, and we appreciate you uh, joining the show. Thanks, fellas. Anytime. Okay, Zach Bayrody on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. Which-